share with you a story, sadly a true story, of a fatality that occurred on October the 9th in the year 2000. And we're going to take you three weeks before that to a drilling platform in the North Sea. Say again. Look, uh, I can't hear you and I don't know if you can hear me, so I'll find you later. I don't bloody believe it. Sorry? I've just been bollocked by the new OIM. Me, for Christ's sake. Well, what's the problem? Oh, I don't know what his problem is. He says... I don't write enough stop cards. Ridiculous. I'm not going to write a stop card for no reason, am I? If he's so keen, he can write them himself. Well, how many are we supposed to write? Oh, the more the bloody merrier. Yeah, well, I've written one today. Oh, good. Well, you can go to the top of the class then. Yeah, well, some of these radio batteries aren't holding a charge. Well, you know why that is, don't you? No. They've been here since God was a boy. Can we get a new set? What do you think? Well, shall I ask? You can ask, but I won't get your hopes up. Well, we're constantly being told to take personal responsibility. Well, why don't you start saving your pocket money then? But I'm guessing they're going to say we don't need new radios. All right, new batteries then. Why don't you just chuck the faulty radios over the side? Yeah, that'll make me popular. Yeah, well, at least the stop card will. All right. Stop cards are missing the point. Eh? If they wanted to stop accidents, they could do a lot more. Such as? Well, you said yourself, most of the kit on this rig is either out of date, knackered, or held together with sticking plaster. More time and money spent on replacing or servicing the substandard gear would mean we could do our job properly and safely. Yeah, I see your point, Martin, but I don't think it always comes down to old equipment. I mean, look at those guys that were caught in that gas leak. I mean, there's no shortage of gas detectors and breathing equipment. No, no. If they were really serious about safety, they'd have one guy on the rig who could close it down or order instant repairs. The OIM can do that. Yeah, yeah, he can do that once, and then he's looking for another job. Yeah. I think they're serious about safety. Oh, yeah? Well, why aren't the emergency lights working? Aren't they? Nope. How do you know? One of the sparks told me. Well, surely emergency lights are safety critical. Yeah, you'd think so. He said they're totally knackered. Well, do they know on shore? What do you think? Well, so who's responsible? Well, that's my point. They would say we are. But how can we be? A... We're not supposed to know. B, they already know on shore. And C, we couldn't even fix it if we wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it is beyond our ability to fix it, but I still... But nothing. They keep saying intervention is our responsibility and then they blame us when it all goes wrong. Yeah, accidents happen because of carelessness or, or being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Absolutely. This is a dangerous environment. So you don't allow anyone on it who hasn't been properly trained and you don't tolerate faulty gear. And even then, you're not going to eradicate accidents because there's always risk. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I agree that you can't eradicate accidents or at least fatalities. I mean, look at Formula One, right? They haven't had a death since Ayrton Senna in 1994. All right, but how much does it cost to develop a Formula One car? Two, 300 million quid? That's a very safe car. And so we're back to investments. Yeah, well, look, forget money for a minute, OK? <laughs> Let's look at an example of an accident that could have been prevented. I was working on a rig where a roustabout was killed when a 90-foot pipe got caught at the end when it was being hoisted. The crane operator couldn't see the full length of the pipe and it swung round, hit the poor guy when he wasn't expecting it to swing in his direction. He should have been looking. Mm. Oh, look, you know how you survive on an oil rig. You trust no one and nothing, and you treat everybody else as if they're a homicidal idiot. Well, it doesn't sound like a recipe for teamwork. Oh, look, don't get me wrong, John Paul. I've got a lot of time for some people. You're all right. I know you'd never do anything deliberately wrong, but if there's one rule in life, it's that eventually everyone fucks up, and I don't intend to be there when they do. Hold on a second, Martin. I need to know that you're watching my back when it really counts. I mean, if, if you're not, then I'm not sure I want to work alongside you. Oh, grow up. I'm serious. We're supposed to be a team. All right, all right. Don't throw your toys out the pram. Oh, you're out of order. Who is? Your attitude stinks. Hey, you remember who you're talking to. Oh, what? So you don't like what you're hearing? You're going to pull rank? Oh, I've had enough of this. I'll put it down a time and a month, shall I?
you will already have started to take a view on the beliefs and attitudes and the culture that existed on that platform. We are now going to take you to the day of the fatal incident on the same platform, October the 9th, 2000. I said, will you clean the kit? It's a simple enough question. Do you want to phone a fucking friend? What's up? Ugh, where do they get these people from? You were at the pre-town meeting, weren't you? Yeah. You heard the OIM say, can you get the kit sorted and clean? Now, what's difficult about that? Well, nothing, you'd think. As long as he doesn't use that jet or my metatarsal boots. How am I supposed to supervise a cretin? Do you want me to have a word? God, no, just make sure he doesn't damage himself or anyone else. I'm running out of jobs that that boy can't fuck up. Well, should we have done a toolbox talk? To use a pressure jet? Well, well, the only risk is he leaves a bit of dirt on a hard hat. I can live with that. Shall I check on him? No, for Christ's sake, John Paul. We've got to assume that whoever gave him the job on shore at least gave him the necessary training. We can't do everyone else's job for him. No, right. I mean, after all... They're running a world-class operation on shore. Unfortunately, we're running a shit heap. Well, I've been on worse rigs. Oh, yeah, yeah. At least this one's got a plasma screen TV. Hmm. Right, the uh, divert assembly. Yes. OK, quick risk task assessment. Yeah, your turn. Well, I haven't been briefed. Neither have I, mate. It was supposed to have been done on the last job, but they were so busy filling out their quota of stop cards, they ran out of time for this job. OK. It's a straightforward enough task. Just fit the diverter assembly over the mandrel that sits on top of the BOP. Right, is there an SOP? Yeah, probably. I've done this a thousand times. I know what I'm doing. I hope you do. Well, yeah, yeah. I well, mean a man riding operation. Yeah, unless you brought your Spider-Man outfit. Hmm. Well, we need five of us. <laughs> Dream on. Well, the rules say that we should use five for a man riding op. Yeah. On shore, they've got libraries full of rules. Out there, we've only got one. Don't fuck up. Right, well, who have we got? Well, I can't be there, so uh, you're in charge. Mm. But you've got the winchman and the uh, magic roustabout. I'm not sending that lad down there. He's a liability. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think uh, Stevie's coming off his tea break. Which Stevie? Assistant Derrickman. Oh, well, that's Stevie I trust. Right, OK, well, can we get the form filled in then? OK, uh, risk elements. What's gone wrong in the past? Not wearing a harness. What? I'm not joking. <laughs> I saw a bloke ride the winch cable once. Well, what happened? I think he got a round of applause. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen here. They can use a harness. I think some new ones have arrived. Yeah, they've not been checked in yet. You might want to stick to the tried and tested ones. Yeah, but I think the new ones are supposed to be safer. It's up to you, mate. But I need it doing now. We're behind as it is. All right, OK. Uh, communication? We well, can radio to the winchman. You can stand underneath the mouse hole and run the show from there. All right. Um, what else? Uh, electrical hazards? No. Nope. Uh, fire hazards? No. Nope. Right. Well, don't, don't just put none. Nah, they don't want to read that, do they? They want to read something like the supervising driller and assistant driller, having made a visual inspection of the work area, ascertained that there was a negligible risk of ignition from the planned work. However, the fire safety equipment had been checked and found to be fully operational. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you obviously don't rate these risk assessments very highly. Well, the rules say we have to do one, whether it's sensible or not. So, we do a risk assessment every single time we do something, which means it becomes routine, which means it becomes pointless. Well, do you think so? I do. For instance, you ride in enough helicopters, don't you? Yeah. You know that when they come into land, they do a checklist before they land. And you know how they tell whether the wheels are down? They see three green lights and they say out loud, three greens. There's been dozens of cases where they've come into land without their wheels down because they expected to see three greens. Checklists are a waste of time. So the point you're making is only do a risk assessment if you're doing something for the first time. Yeah, or, or if it's obviously dangerous. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I agree. Where's Einstein gone? 
Well, shall I go and find him? No, no, I'll go and give him a kick up the arse. Look, you get Stevie down here and get that diverter assembly fitted. I need it doing now, all right? And when you've done it, come and find me. Right. Several weeks later, this happened in a psychologist's office in Aberdeen. Uh, um, oh, John Paul. Sorry, I was... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit early. Take a seat. Thanks. So how have you been? Yeah, good, yeah, very good, yeah. Not bad, okay, you know. Last time we met, we talked about your difficulty in sleeping. How was it this week? Oh, it's, uh, well, not great, if I'm honest. Are you waking in the night? No, it's not that, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting to sleep in the first place. Do you have a routine? Yeah, I, uh, I leave it as late as I can before going to bed. How late? One-ish. And then? I just lie there, wide awake, trying to think of nothing, but I can't, I keep seeing. So I get up and pour myself a whiskey and, and uh, turn on the TV, uh, find some sport and, and sit there until dawn. <laughs> How do you spend your days? I walk. Where do you go? Well, anyway, I mean, I don't plan it. I just leave the house and head towards town and keep going. I try to stick to busy places and streets so that I have to concentrate a bit instead of, instead of going back inside my head, you know. I imagine you know what we psychologists would say about that. Yeah, that I'm a nutter? <laughs> no, no, that you're exhibiting classic symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Yeah, well... With all due respect, it doesn't take a genius to work that out. Touché. Will you give me another sick note? Do you want one? Yeah. No, I... I, I don't know. How do you feel about returning to work? <clears throat> I don't know if I can. In order to move on, you'll need at some point to reach what we call acceptance. Which means? That you own the traumatic memory. Well, I own it, all right. I can't get rid of it. Well, at the moment, you're creating strategies to avoid thinking about it and reliving it. It often helps to confront it. You could start by telling me what happened. Trust me, you don't want to hear it. That's why I'm here. It was three weeks ago, but I don't remember a thing I've done since then. What day of the week was it? Thursday. And what's ironic is I shouldn't have been on the rig at all. I mean, I was due to fly off the day before, but the guy who replaced me was ill, so I stayed. Were you upset? Well, no, no, it happens, you know, with bad weather, sickness, short-staffed. So it was, well, just another day? Yeah. Yeah, a bit rainy and miserable, but no change there. There's a, uh, there's a problem under the platform. Someone needed to go down and take a look. I mean, there should have been five of us. The rules say that it should have five, but well, for some reason there's just three of us. The winchman, me on the radio, and, and, and Stevie. Stevie got the harness on and, uh, and we were preparing to winch him down to the mouse hole. Mouse hole? It, oh, it's, it's a small hatch about 18 inches across. It, mm. The thing is, it, I can't do this, I can't, Jesus, fuck! Take your time. I, I, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay to be angry. Angry? Yes, I'm angry. Why do you think that is? Because it should never have happened. 
Stevie was using a harness that should have been replaced. There were, there were better harnesses, safer, but we had the old sort. Whose responsibility was it to check the harnesses? Well, it's not mine. I mean, that's, that's crap. I mean, I could have refused to use it and insisted we had a new one, but I didn't. I had a job to do, you know, a routine job. So you did the job? Yeah. Yeah, Stevie, Stevie was in the harness and uh, we were lowering him through the mouse hole and I, and I watched him go down through the platform and that was fine. And then after about 20 minutes, he, he waved to go back up. So I called up for the winch to bring him back and, and, and that was fine. And, and, and then it all, it all went... <laughs> Do you need to take a break? No, 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 no. Steve was almost out of the mouse hole when the harness slipped. He should have been going up vertically, but it slipped, so he was horizontal to the hole. I mean, I, mean, I screamed into the radio to stop, but, but nothing happened. The winch just kept pulling him up towards the hole, and I, I was screaming in the radio, but the radio, the bloody radio was dead. It wasn't charged or something. So I ran over to the PA system and I, and I punched the button and I, and I was screaming for it to stop, but it records what you say, so it took seconds. I mean, not many, but, but seconds. And by the time the winchman heard me yelling for it to stop, Stevie had been pulled through the hole. I saw it. His spine was pulled through his body. I killed him. It was an accident. No, it's not good enough. It's not. I should have checked the radio. I knew that people didn't leave him on the charger for long enough. Everyone knew. I mean, there was a stop card telling people to charge them properly. Whose job was it to charge the radios? Well, it's everyone's. We're supposed to be a team. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean to shout at you. Don't worry. I, uh... I have to go. You don't need to. No, 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 I, I have to. Will I see you again next week? I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs>